the United States Capitol there on a beautiful Sunday morning here in Washington. 37 lawmakers, critics, and analysts have made the rounds this morning on the Sunday talk shows. The Democratic Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz of Florida, well, she gets the last word. Thank you for joining us here. Thank if you me. listen to the debate this morning, people look at this compromise the Senate brokered Friday, and they say the only way to keep it intact and get a bill to President Obama by the end of this coming week is to keep that number. As you know, your speaker, many other Democrats in the House say, no, no, we don't like the Senate bill. I think the speaker used the term violence, did violence to what you're trying to accomplish in the House. So will you come back in the House this week and say, we're putting the money back in? Well, what we're going to come back in the House this week and do is make sure that we can apply the tourniquet to the gash that has been busted open into the economy after eight years of Republican applied leeches. I mean, at the end of the day, the front page of the Washington Post says economists agree speed matters more than size or shape. And we are going to go through the normal legislative process, the give and take, and ensure that we can invest in our nation's, nation's infrastructure, but build if, schools. But if speed matters more than size or shape, to use the headline you just read, why doesn't the House say, you know what, we don't like this, we thought ours was better, but we will accept it, because then we can get a bill to the President on Wednesday or Thursday? Well, we know that we crafted a bill that includes the priorities of the American people to ensure that we can get them working again, investing in our nation's infrastructure, roads and bridges, making sure that we can rebuild schools, uh, establishing a streamlined health care system so that we can computerize medical records and reduce overall health care costs. We've got to get aid to states to avoid layoffs of teachers and firefighters and police officers. Those are the kinds of investments that need to be made to ensure that we can get this economy turned around. Now that's 90 percent of both bills. We've got about 10 percent difference and we're going to make sure that we negotiate over that last 10 percent and pass a bill that can get this economy turned around and send it to the president. So you won't take the Senate bill. You will insist in the House on putting some of that spending back in. The Founding Fathers created a legislative process that also created the Conference Committee and we're going to go through the Conference Committee and the appropriations process this week, come out with a good product that will help uh, get the economy turned around. As you know, the new president came to town promising a new era of bipartisanship. Eight years of George W. Bush, eight years of Bill Clinton, not much true bipartisanship in this town. Your speaker, after the Senate compromises reached on Friday, made clear she doesn't like it. And she said this, Washington seems consumed in the process argument of bipartisanship when the rest of the country says they need this bill. The process argument of bipartisanship. The president says it is a critical spirit to have in this town. Your boss in the House, the speaker, doesn't seem to think it's important. On the contrary, Speaker Pelosi has made bipartisanship and reaching out to the Republicans in our House a priority. We made sure that we had markup after markup in committee this week and in the last few weeks, which included Republican amendments that we heard, that some that we accepted. We reached out our hand across the aisle, asked them to help craft this legislation that was rejected. So we have made an effort at, at reaching out our hand across the aisle. They, they really seem to be more interested in making sure that this whole process fails. Uh, I, it's really baffling to me why they don't want to rep pass an economic recovery package. They'll have to answer the American people as to why that is. Well, one of your colleagues on the Republican side, the one, one of the ones who disagrees with you, Mike Pence, was out this morning and he says this plan is horrible. Let's listen. <laughs> the centerpiece of any effective stimulus bill that's ever been passed by Congress in the recent past has been tax relief. The but, center of this stimulus bill is massive, unaccountable government spending and the American people are right, tired of it. But, you're shaking, you're shaking your head, but you had to, they had to add some tax cuts and take out some spending to get it palatable, to get three, just three Republican votes over in the Senate. I, I'm going to ask you the last question on this point. I know you disagree with Congressman Pence, but will you accept the current mix if that is the only way to get a bill to the president this week? Well, that's pr predictable criticism from my friend Mike Pence, but the, the bottom line is that we've had eight years, as the president said, of doing it their way through pure tax cuts. We have to have the right mix of tax cuts that go targeted to the, to the middle class, like President Obama's tax cut that would go to 95% of Americans that we included in the House bill. We are going to have a balance, the right balance of tax cuts and spending, but we're not going to continue to allow the middle class to twist in the wind, and we're going to focus on investments in this economy that will create jobs. 598,000 jobs lost in the last month, 2.6 million in the last year of the Bush administration, Job creation, at least three to four million, those are our priorities. That's the president's priority, making sure we get tax cuts that are targeted to the middle class. That's how we're going to get this economy turned around. We will watch the debate as it leaves the Senate, comes back your way in the House this week. Congressman Thanks. Debbie Wasserman Schultz, thank you for having the last word with us today. And when it's your neighbors who are out of work, struggling, see things differently. Next, an unlikely pitchman for the president, the Republican mayor of one Midwestern town who right now is rooting for Democrat Barack Obama. Thank you.